Have you ever wondered why bird beaks can all look so different? I mean, they're all birds, right? Wrong. Okay, well, yeah, they, they are all birds. Looking at an animal or a Pokemon's beak can actually tell you a lot about their ecology and where they fit in on the food chain. A lot of core principles of ecology can be learned by just looking at Pokemon. And that's what we're going to do here today. Welcome to my channel, Geek Ecology, where we take a look at your favorite fandoms, organisms, and their ecology. Today in the Pokemon world, we're going to look at all of the bird Pokemon beaks and what they can tell us about their ecology. Let's hop right in. In total, there are about 55 different bird Pokemon. I've categorized these 55 different Pokemon into 9 different categories that have a large amount of variation within each category. Our categories today are Generalist, Grainivorous, Frugivorous, Drilling, Filtering, Insectivorous, Piscivorous, Carnivorous, and Nectarivorous. And each of these categories represent a different shape of beak that is specialized to what that bird Pokemon is going to eat. So let's hop into our first beak category, the Generalist beak category. Pokemon with these beaks usually do a little bit of everything. They're usually very adaptable and flexible, and very successful. When you look at a beak on these Pokemon, you can confidently say, yes, that is a beak. Fruits and seeds usually make up the majority of the diet of Pokemon in this category, but they are also able to feed on a wide variety of other things since their beak is adaptable. Things like insects and small mollusks, as well as carrion and leftover human food. Generalist beaks are the Swiss army knife of the beak world. A good animal to envision that fits into this category is the American crow. It's an animal with a very generalist beak that can eat a wide variety of foods and occupy a wide variety of niches. Pokemon that fit into this category include Honchcrow and Swellow, as well as Corviknight and Altaria. Again, these Pokemon don't rely on any one specific food source to make up their diet and instead rely on a wide variety. Our second category is the Grainivorous or Seed-Eating Beak Type. Animals or Pokemon in this category want to have wedge-shaped beaks. They want to have a fine point at the tip of their beak that is articulate enough to pick up seeds out of shells, but strong enough towards the back of their beak that they are able to crack them open. Most songbirds are going to fit into this category quite well. Pokemon that belong here include Natu, Pidov, and Pidgey. Organisms that belong to this beak category are able to occupy a wide variety of habitats such as forests and prairies, but also some urban settings. Our third category are the frugivorous beaks, the beaks that are adapted to peeling large fruits and opening large seeds. At a glance, they look like the carnivorous beak category that we will talk about later. They usually have a large hook on the maxilla or the top of their beak, and this allows them to rip open tough rinds of large fruits or crack open hard seeds. Organisms that belong to this category include Toucanon and its real-life counterpart, the Toucan, as well as Chatot and Zatu, and Oricorio. A lot of these Pokemon and animals are going to inhabit tropical regions, places with a large variety and density of large fruiting plants. Next up is the Drilling Beak category. Beaks here must be strong and sharp. They're used to drill into the wood to reach the grubs that are found below the bark. And our sole Pokemon occupier of this category is the Pokemon Picky Peck, which is an obvious analog to real world woodpeckers. However, Picky Peck eventually evolves into Toucanon and leaves this category behind. So we don't even get a fully evolved Pokemon in this category, which is a real shame. Moving on, we have our Filtering Beak category. These beaks are built to pass water in and out of them in order to strain for small invertebrates and small plant matter. These beaks can also kind of be used as a generalist beak when feeding on larger plants or larger animals. Animals in this category include our dabbling ducks as well as birds like the flamingo and the roseate spoonbill. Flamingos and spoonbill specialize on small invertebrates that are suspended in the water column and are also responsible for where they get their brilliant pink coloration from. Pokemon in this category include our duck Pokemon, including Ducklet, Farfetch'd, and the new Pokemon Quaxly. Next up is our Insectivorous Beak category. These beaks are incredibly wide at their opening and allow the greatest area in order to snatch flying insects out of the air. Animals in this category include Kingbirds, Swallows, and Nightjars. A good Pokemon to fit in this group is Talo. Talo is based off the modern day Swallow and you can tell that its beak is incredibly wide towards its mouth. 
Our seventh category belongs to the piscivores. Most organisms in this category have incredibly long and sharp beaks to pluck fish out of the water. Sometimes they're even used like spears in order to stab straight through fish if they can't get their mouth around them. Animals in this category are going to include your wading birds. Things like the great egret and the great blue heron. Pokemon in this category include Cramorant and Fero. Pokemon that really fit that sharpened spear type of beak. You can also have flightless and highly terrestrial Pokemon that fit into this category as well, like Doduo and Dodrio. It's common for wading birds to hunt at the edge of bodies of water, and this is likely what these Pokemon also do. But there is also a bonus type of beak within this category, with something that looks like Pelipper. Although they eat the same kind of organisms, they have a very differently shaped beak. Pelipper and modern day pelicans will dive into the water and with their wide beak they hope to scoop up as many fish as possible. Two other members of this category include Moltres and Zapdos. These Pokemon are rarely spotted so it might make sense that they forage in the open ocean. Given their extremely large body size, the open ocean would give them a plethora of fish to feed on, allowing them to maintain their large size and staying out of the way of humans view. Modern day birds that feed on fish are among some of the largest that we have around today. So it makes sense that some of these larger bodied legendary Pokemon would feed on the same thing. And next up we have our carnivores. These animals and Pokemon rely on catching live prey or eating off of large carcasses. Animals in this category include your modern day raptors such as your hawks and eagles, as well as birds that feed on carrion such as your vultures. Remember we said the beaks of these animals and Pokemon resemble the beaks of some frugivores. They have that large hook on their maxilla, and similar to how the frugivore beak was adapted to tear into the hard rinds of large fruits, this beak is adapted to tear into the skin of animals or to deliver a killing blow. Pokemon in this category include Mandibuzz, Spiro, and Noctowl, as well as Braviary, Talonflame, and Unfazant, and possibly Ho-Oh and Articuno. These last two Pokemon would have to feed on incredibly large prey to sustain such a large body size. However, we can see this in the modern day Golden Eagle. Most of the prey they take is about half of their weight, but they have been known to take prey upwards of 250 pounds, which is a huge prey item for an eagle that typically weighs between 10 to 15 pounds. And given that Ho-Oh and Articuno weigh about 430 and 120 pounds respectively, this would allow them to take enormous prey items. And finally, our last category belongs to the Nectariverous birds. Real life examples include your various hummingbird species. They're basically role playing as giant insects lapping the nectar out of flowering plants. However, we don't have a single Nectariverous bird Pokemon. There is no hummingbird Pokemon analog. I mean, what's up with that? So here in this video, let's document my formal complaint to have more Nectariverous bird Pokemon. I want to be able to Pokemon that has terrible stats, weighs 3 grams, and looks really pretty. And that does it for all of our conventional beak categories. However, there are a couple Pokemon that didn't really fit into any of our beak categories. And those Pokemon are Skarmory and Archaeops. Archaeops is an extinct fossil and likely represents the earliest lineage of bird Pokemon. It was alive millions of years ago before birds really fully developed. Skarmory could represent an early evolutionary offshoot, and be a sister taxon to the rest of our current bird Pokemon. Both of these Pokemon have teeth, which don't really occur in any other modern day bird Pokemon. Teeth are fairly heavy and were heavily selected against when birds were evolving their ability to fly. Weight reduction was incredibly important to them. But perhaps weight reduction isn't important to a Pokemon like Skarmory since its body is made out of steel and didn't need the extra weight reduction since it found a way around that problem. Maybe its teeth help it hold on to slippery prey like fish or amphibians that could otherwise wiggle out. For this we can look at several species of pterosaurs that also had teeth and likely dined on fish. Pterosaurs were flying reptiles that weren't dinosaurs that lived around 200 to 60 million years ago. They were incredibly successful so maybe it works out for Skarmory. Skarmory could also be feeding on large terrestrial prey that might otherwise have the strength to break out of an ordinary beak. This would also mean that maybe it doesn't need the weight reduction that lack of teeth would offer, and instead relies on brute strength on the ground. And that does it. We've covered most, if not all, of the beaks of our bird Pokemon. If you have enjoyed our foray into Poke Ornithology, let me know in the comments and subscribe to my channel. 
You can also find me other places and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Thanks for watching and happy researching everyone.